time for River Dragons Hockey. Tonight's game is brought to you by Houston Clinic, Aflac, Burger King, B&B Beverage Company, West Georgia Oral and Facial Surgery, Victory Land Casino, Candlewood Suites, WLTZ NBC 38, Interstate National Truck and Trailer, CDC Cypress Partners, Vaporville, Buffalo Rock, Pepsi Cola, Golden Corral, Broadwood and Associates, and BMB Broadcasting. Now, let's start the game with the voice of River Dragons Hockey, Zach DeBozart. Thank you very much, Brian Thomas. Welcome into another edition of the FPHL Season Sim, brought to you by our friends at the Under Review. I'm Zach DeBozart, the voice of the River Dragons. Happy you're alongside as part of your Sunday afternoon probably in self-isolation, maybe in quarantine. Who knows at this point? We just know it's been a while, and we thank you for hunkering down, doing your part to help flatten the curve in this very strange and unprecedented time here in the world we live in today. Tonight, we have got the conclusion of the weekend series between the Columbus River Dragons and the Battle Creek Rumblebees. As we mentioned, same as Saturday's game, this was supposed to be played at the Columbus Ice Rink, which is just next door to the Columbus Civic Center, and it was technically a Battle Creek home game administratively. That's why you'll see Battle Creek today in their home black jerseys, the River Dragons still clad in their more traditional road whites. Looking around the league and the action that happened last night, Danbury came away with another big win over Port Huron. Carolina helped out Columbus's cause with a win over Danville. This means the race for the number three seat in the West is now down to one point between Columbus and Danville. Break that down in a second. Elmira and Watertown both picking up road wins against Menor and Delaware. Not only is that extending Elmira's points percentage lead uh, ahead of Danbury, even though they both got three points last night. In fact, actually, Danbury gets more, I think, because they play less games. Uh, but either way, Elmira is now ahead of Danbury in terms of the first place in the East spot. But because both Menor and Delaware lost, that race is still extremely tight on the fourth place spot in the east and fourth place is in the playoffs and fifth place is staying home and there's a more interesting scenario when we get into next week the final week of the fphl season but for right now let's bring you the standings as they sit right now in the sim on this march 29th elmira as we mentioned is ahead of danbury 117 points on 55 games played Danbury 110 on 53. The points percentage between these two can probably get very, very close depending on what happens next weekend. Watertown sits comfortably in third. They have clinched the third spot in the Eastern playoffs with 86 points on 56 games so far. Now, Menor has two more points than Delaware, but they've played three more games, so they're on the outside looking in right now. Delaware, 49 points on 52 games. Menor, 51 points on 55 games. And as we look ahead to the schedule next weekend, both Delaware and Menor are on the road against the top two seeds in the East. Delaware is at Danbury, and Delaware has been known to give the Rabbits some fits this season. However, I don't believe they've played yet in the Sim. So it'll be interesting to see how the game treats that relationship. The Menor Icebreakers are at the Elmira Enforcers. So both teams that are on the playoff bubble are against big time teams in the East. And those two teams are going to be fighting for first place in the East. So it's not like one's just going to take the rest of the weekend off and just gift the other team a playoff berth. No, there is going to be some scrappy games coming up on April 3rd and April 4th. And then, it, just in case it wasn't interesting all told, April 5th, there's only two games. One of them involves the River Dragons. You'll hear me on the call for it against the Danville Dashers. More on that in a second. But the Elmira, Th Elmira Enforcers host the Delaware Thunder. So that is going to be just crazy if the playoff races are still tight down the stretch. And if Delaware perhaps loses that game, maybe their points percentage knocks them below Menor, who wouldn't be doing anything on a Sunday. Wow, can't wait to see what the rest of this season sim has in store for us. 
over in the West, Carolina has clinched home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs. 125 points on 54 games played. Port Huron, they have clinched second place. 98 points on 53 games played. Then, as we mentioned, that race between Danville and Columbus, both on 54 games played. Danville 85, Columbus 84. Both of those teams will finish with 58 too. So 58 games played, that is. So a raw point total uh, will be good enough to dictate who's third and who's fourth. And then if they're tied, then it goes into a whole bunch of tiebreakers. Hopefully we won't have to get to that point. Battle Creek, hey, they found double-digit points with that overtime win against Columbus on Friday. They're now up to 10, but they have been long since eliminated from the sim, unfortunately for them. And again, with only that one-point difference between Danville and Columbus, that April 5th, those two games could be monumental as Danville is at Columbus for that game game who knows that could be the difference between third and fourth it's sure to be a lot of fun but without any further stalling or further burger king pregame show if you will let's now jump in to game three battle creek at columbus as we look at how these teams have fared so far this weekend well battle creek they did pick up the overtime win as we mentioned but columbus they came to play big time with a seven to two win on saturday that gives Columbus four out of six points, and they will be looking to close out the series strong and put more pressure on the Dashers, who have yet to take a point against the Carolina Thunderbirds this weekend. For the third time in as many nights, it's Joel Eisenhower over to our left, and as we said, the Rumblebees clad in the black jerseys. Cody Karpinski gets back-to-back -back starts. He's over to our right, looking for back-to-back -back wins to close out this series strong. Battle Creek left to right, Columbus right to left, Graham V. Alves, we are underway here at the virtual Columbus Ice Rink. Alves moves this one ahead, right wing side at the circle, Luciani fires, and a pad save made by Karpinski. Toe save ranging to his left, he had to make a big one early. Here's Learakos now into the zone for the first time for Columbus. Learakos a shot, pad save, Nicoletti the rebound, plays it off to the far corner. Bondarenko, right wing circle to Graham, plays it back to the right point, just got past Shapitsin. And Columbus will have to touch up as Shapitzen's forced back into his own end, then forced into a turnover. Nicoletti and Young play a little catch. Here's Nicoletti over the left wing hash. He drops it back for Young at the point. Rims it around. Shapitzen will intercept behind the net. Alves takes it off him, firing a shot as Young, and that one just high over the bar. A pass intended for Young in the middle goes through his legs, back out to the neutral zone, and Battle Creek's turned it over. Learakos into the zone, left wing side. Bondarenko crashes the net. Shapitzen a shot. Glove save made there by Eisenhower. And we get our first whistle of the game. 17.07 left to go here in the Aflac first period. No score, Columbus and Battle Creek. Dimmitt v. Pfeiffer on the draw. They tie up, and Battle Creek will come out with it. Soilus is going to move it up the left wing side. Soilus at the hash mark, staring down De Cristofaro. Goes behind the net, and De Cristofaro will take it off of him. Because Dukov and Fallis play a little catch. Now Dimmitt is going to head man the puck out of the zone. Up to the right wing. Here's Krupp. Back for Dimmitt at the circle. Dimmitt back for Krupp in the slot. Couldn't pull the trigger. Didn't like what he saw. To Dimmitt's side of the net. Left point. Because Stukov, his shot deflected in front. And Eisenhower will eventually cover up that slow roller as he found it near his equipment. 15.36 now left to go here in the first. Some good end-to-end -end action as teams finishing up a grueling three and three here in the virtual NHL world. Keenan and Susie play a little catch and Keenan just got flat and I think Lenartson put him towards the corner boards with a huge hit. Here's Hayes on the far side board, sends this one ahead. Now Lenartson's gonna two on two it with Laporte. Over to Laporte, left wing circle. He fired a shot, blocked by Susie. He's still got in the slot. Laporte a chance blocker save made there by Eisenhower. At the left point, here's to put the far up. The O's went a shot. He scores! Looked like it got tipped in front. And the River Dragons have an early 1-0 lead. 14-04 to go in the first. Let's see, is this Ozilic? No, it's Will Laporte. The big man doing work in front, creating havoc, setting a nice deflection. And it goes to Eisenhower, and I think Susie as well, who was along the goal line. Yeah, look at Eisenhower, very far out atop his crease. It got past him, it got past Susie, and Will Laporte, his first goal of the sim, has made it 1-0 Columbus. 14.04 to go in the first, and we are back underway. Citrone to Keikos, back to Citrone, left wing circle, his shot blocked away by Karpinski. 
Behind the net, Keiko's taking some abuse from her guy. Citrona shot blocked in front by Kugler. Moving this one out to the neutral zone. Kugler headmans the rush, right point. He had a goal last night, right circle and a glove save. Made there by Eisenhower, and he'll give up no rebound. 12.54 left to go here in the Aflac first period. 1-0 Columbus on Will Laporte's first of the sim. And I believe, if I'm remembering right, this should be his third of the year overall. Might be fourth. I apologize, Porty, if you're watching in and I don't have that information off the top of my head. Thomas V. Gerson on the draw. Gerson will win it. Ozilinch a blast. And it was loose in the slot off of a block, and Gregorich will take it away. Here comes Gregorich, three on three as he hits the line through the middle. Right wing circle now to De Rossi. De Rossi, right wing corner, back to the high slot. A shot that went blocked in front. Gerson doing a good job getting his body in the way. Here comes Hergot up the left wing side. Hergot, left circle, stops it up. Now to the high slot. He's looking for a shooting lane. Nothing there as Champlain takes it off of his stick. 11.20 left to go here in the first. Champlain skates it up the ice, right circle. He's at the dot, knocked off of his stick, then poked away by Ozilins, right to the path of Dimmitt, and here he comes with speed. Cameron Dimmitt, left wing circle. Wait, stops up, fires, trying to go five hole, and Eisenhower closed it up at the last second. 10.39 left to go here in period one. one nothing Columbus, and a faceoff coming to the right of Eisenhower. Dimmitt v. Pfeiffer on the draw. Dimmitt wins it clean. Clauston and Schapitzen play some catch. Clauston down to the right circle for Krupp. Now to Fallis up high to the middle. That pass was behind Dimmitt as he was tied up with a man in the slot. Halfway through the Aflac first period, 1-0 Columbus on Will Laporte's first of the sim. Here's Soilus, right wing corner. He takes a check from Schapitzen. Fallis tied up. Soilus with this puck now, right wing circle to the middle. Pfeiffer and a save made there. Soilus. Now to Nicoletti. Him and Strack play a little catch. Nicoletti to the middle. Fight for a chance. Patted away by Karpinski. Sliding to his left. Soilus rims this one around. Nobody home in a black jersey. So Clauston moves this one ahead for a teammate. Right wing circle. Here's Krug to the middle. Dim it back for Lenartsen. Check that save made. And Lenartsen scores on the rebound. Anton Lenartsen pops in his own rebound. Coming fresh off the bench. 15 to go in the first. And it's a 2 nothing lead. Bit of a sneaky line change there as Jake Hood got off first on his line, opened it up for Lenartsen. He made a good shot on Eisenhower, forced him to go left, and then just potted his own rebound to double up Columbus's lead 2-0, 8-15 to go here in the first. Alves will win the draw. We're back underway here at the virtual ice rink. Susi ahead here, right wing side for Luciani, trying to play that to the middle. Keenan left circle a shot. That one hit Karpinski right on the chest. Keenan back to the left point, went by his man, and down the ice it'll go, collected by Alves. Over for Luciani in the neutral zone. Near side boards, he skates this one up, Laporte on the back check. Luciani playing it to the middle for Alves. Alves, big hit put on there by Lenartz, and Alves still holds in at the left point, though. Keenan a blast, and that one blocked by Laporte, and down the ice it goes. Keenan, if you missed it, had the overtime winner on Friday night between these two teams. That gave Battle Creek the early 2-1 points advantage in the series. Since then, 4-2. Left wing circle, Alves with his puck. To Gregory, center point. His shot blocked it away and kept in by the glass behind Karpinski. 5-20 left to go here in the first. 2-0 Columbus. Babinen for Mortley, fresh off the bench. Now over for Young, left wing circle. Young with a fancy D. He fires a shot, blocked it away by Karpinski. Babinen to Luciani, to Morton. Gregorich and Babinen play a little catch along the blue line. 4.20 left to go here in the first. Mortley back for Gregorich. A shot padded away. Karpinski saw that all the way with no traffic in front. Battle Creek still hemming Columbus in. Good job on the offensive pressure right now. Mortley getting it to the middle. Luciani a shot. Save made Karpinski from in close. Young holds it in. Left circle. Mortley a chance. Gloved away by Karpinski. Oh, River Dragon scrambling a little bit right now as Battle Creek has just been dominating in possession right now. 2.50 left to go here in the first. Babin it to Gregorich to the middle. DeCristofaro tied up a man and prevented that pass from connecting. Now DeCristofaro skates this out of the zone. Finally, Columbus on some offensive pressure here. Left wing circle. A shot. Glove save made there by Eisenhower. We get a whistle and now we can take our media timeout. 2.02 to go in the first. 2-0 Columbus on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. 
Whether you're in need of short or long-term storage solutions, Shredaway offers compliant and secure options right here in Columbus. Shredaway's facility is securely monitored 24-7 with gated access for additional protection. And Shredaway's professional staff, fully trained and certified, ensure that your records are safe from collection to storage. Peace of mind is their top priority. For more information, go to Shredaway.com. Shredaway, safe and secure document storage locally. Media timeout comes at a good time for Columbus after Battle Creek had hemmed them into the zone for what felt like the minute in the real world, but probably about three minutes virtually. And they're back underway. Battle Creek winning the defensive zone draw, and they are looking to cut into this lead before the break. De Rossi to the right point, had that one go by a man and goes all the way bound back into the Battle Creek end. Nicoletti. Skates this one ahead, pass for De Rossi. He's over the red line, two on two. He'll just dump it in right wing corner. This one rims around, some glitches. I'm scared, mom, please help. Her got left wing circle. Now gonna play it up to Santa Paulo. Two on two over the line. Here's Gerson right wing. Now to Santa Paulo, left circle and a save made by Eisenhower. 11.7 left to go in the first. Two nothing, Columbus. Thomas, you see there with a big check onto a man. That was Oren Hergott. Hergott sacrificing the body to make a play. Get done with another face-off here coming up to the right of Eisenhower. Thomas v. Gerson on this one. They tie up. Thomas pushes Gerson away. De Rossi going to headman this up. He's got five seconds left. He's got to fire it soon. Thomas back for De Rossi. A shot blocked away by Karpinski. Into the corner it goes, and that'll do it for 20 minutes of play. Columbus takes an early 2-0 lead thanks to goals from Will Laporte and Anton Lenartsen. Couple of big boys getting the puck to the back of the net. And we see a couple of fine saves by Karpinski as well. There's the goal from Lenartsen that'll take us to the break. The first period media timeout brought to you by WLTZ NBC 38. And we'll be right back with the second period after this. Your vision, our drive. That's our motto at Express Printing, providing printing and copy services for big businesses and small families. We bring big ideas to the world of graphic design and printing. Visit us at 1520 13th Avenue in Columbus or call 706-323-5639. We can also be found online at the letter X, PressPrintingAndDesign.com. Express Printing, if you can imagine it, we can do it. We've invented a new messaging system using the crisp sounds of Bud Light. Crisp Code. Lesson 42. This is how you say happy hour. It's happy hour. Let's go get some Bud Lights. That's it for today. Brewed with no corn syrup. Bud Light. Crisp. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light Beer. Anheuser-Busch. St. Louis, Missouri. We are back here at the Columbus Ice Rink. River Dragons and Rumblebees set to take the ice for the Liberty Utility second period. River Dragons left to right across your screen and the Whites Battle Creek right to left and the Blacks. Graham V. Alves on the draw and we are back underway. Little glitching tearing aside and Columbus will have the puck in their own zone. MJ Graham, left wing, skates this one into the zone. Bondarenko driving the net. Graham fires a shot, patted away by Eisenhower. Grant from behind, right wing corner. Him and Bondarenko play a little catch. Now to Shapitson at the point. Bondarenko right circle to the middle. Lirakos, and he took too much time with it there. He fires a one-timer off a pass and a glove save made by Eisenhower. 18.39 to go here in the second. 2-0. Columbus leads over Battle Creek thanks to two first period goals. See right there, Eisenhower still in sharp form, making his first big save of the second period. That one coming on the blocker side. We had seen the River Dragons exploit that blocker side because, well, this weekend Eisenhower's glove has been nothing short of phenomenal. Lirakos, left circle. Bondarenko, center point. Now he and Clauston trade places. Left point, Schapitzen. Playing catch with Bondarenko. Clauston a drive and a save made, ranging to his left by Eisenhower. Lirakos collects the rebound. Clauston, D to D with Schapitzen. Center point, now left point. Left circle, here's Bondarenko. Back for Clauston, plays it down to the corner for Lirakos. Lirakos, high slot with this one. He winds up and sends it high over the bar. Alves takes a big hit from Graham behind the net. 
Referee says legal, we play on. Di Cristofaro tied up at the center point. And here comes Battle Creek the other way, three on three. Luciani, right wing circle, stops up at the wall, gets around a man, tying up Young. As he couldn't get the puck away, as Di Cristofaro did a good job holding him up. Here's Jay Krupp, left wing circle. Krupp stops up to the middle, Follis, and a good back check by Pfeiffer took away that chance. Pfeiffer intercepted a pass intended for Follis in the middle. Now Kostukov has it left point, pass to the slot, knocked away. Susi, pass ahead to Soilis, two on two with Carey trying to drive the net. Soilis, right wing circle, spins away from a check. He's got some space. Keenan left circle, a blast, blocked in front by Krupp. Carey for Soilis, now a pass circle to circle, and a save made in the slot off of Soilis' stick. Karpinski had to be sharp there. Here's Krupp moving into the zone one-on-one. -on -one. Krupp right circle, blockered away by Eisenhower. 14 minutes left to go here in the second. Still 2-0 Columbus. The end-to-end -end action is flowing right now. Columbus versus Battle Creek. Here's Pfeiffer left wing circle. He fires a shot from the high slot, and Karpinski reached up with the glove and was able to find that one. 13-25 left to go in the Liberty Utilities second period. 2-0 Columbus. And I tell you, there was some great action on both ends. The speed guys were out in the second period to be sure. And I had the feeling for a little bit that zone down to our right seems like the ice is tilted that way a little bit. Remember, late in the first period, Battle Creek had a long extended possession in the first. Well, to start the second, Columbus had returned the favor. Here's C.J. Hayes, left wing circle. He's in over the line. Hayes fires a shot and a save made by Eisenhower. They'll play it back to the left point for Ozelich. Now Kuba, more glitching, more tearing. Everyone's frightened, but Battle Creek is able to come away. And Joel Eisenhower, he fears no technical dilemmas. Here, left wing circle, it's Citrone. Over to Gregorich, right circle. He had a stick tied up there, and Babinon can't hold the zone at the left point. 11 and a half left to go here in the second. Two at nothing, Columbus. Mortley over to the right circle. Now De Rossi back for Citrone. His shot save made. Rebound. Ozilinch able to clear it before Battle Creek could pot it into the net. Here's Hayes for Hergott. High slot. He waits it up. Fires in a glove save. Made there by Eisenhower. As he gives up no rebound with that trusty trapper. <laughs> Ten and a half left to go here in the second. 2-0 Columbus. Both of their goals coming in the first period. One from Will Laporte on a deflection. And Anton Lenartsen potting a rebound home past Eisenhower has gotten us to where we are so far in this one. Gerson v. Thomas. Thomas with the box out and the win back for Strack. Passing it across his own slot area. A little dangerous, but Battle Creek is able to come away with it anyways. Here's Thomas left wing circle. Thomas stops it up to the right point. Strack now firing a shot. Thomas, that one blocked in front. Champlain finds it high slot. Thomas right circle. A little bit of give and go there. Pass to De Rossi. Poked away by Columbus. Held into the zone by Nicoletti though. Thomas left wing corner. Dodges a check from Gerson. Trying to drive it side of the net. And Karpinski held true to his post. 8.50 to go here in the second as Hergott comes in over the line. Left wing circle. To Clouston. High slot. Passing it back. San Apollo. Clouston with that center point. A shot. Deflected. Save made. Eisenhower. Gerson a chance on the backhand. And that one fought off by the Battle Creek netminder. 8 5 to go here in the second. Still 2 0 Columbus. Back the other way. Here's De Rossi right wing circle. More tearing. But now it's Carey right circle. Back for Dimmitt. And that's not the right guy he meant to pass to. Maybe the glitching got to him there. Santa Paulo right wing circle. His shot save made by Eisenhower. Seven minutes even left to go in the second. And we get our media timeout. The glitching is scaring us, so let's get to that break immediately. Ah, too much on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcasting Network. At Georgia Power, we believe our lake should be filled with water, not trash. That a healthy honeybee population will pollinate a healthier environment. That building homes is just as important as powering them. That's why we believe what we do off the grid is just as important as the clean, safe, reliable, affordable energy we provide on it. And that's a different kind of energy. Visit georgiapower.com community. Well, the glitching has now calmed down. We're back underway. Fallis, right point, trying to get this one to a teammate. Back into the corner, off to Cristofaro. Fallis drives the net. Dimmitt with a chance, playing it back. Kostukov and a blocker save. Made there by Eisenhower. Five and a half left to go here in the second. Two-nothing Columbus lead. However, I don't think the virtual Columbus ice rink was meant to hold this many people. There are tears in the matrix right now. 
A penalty coming up to Battle Creek. Slashing is the signal, and Shea Carey will head off to the box. Just getting the stick in tight on Fallis. Got him right on the glove. 14.45 mark of the second period, and we have our first Georgia Power power play of the night for Columbus. They've scored power play goals in each of the last two games. Let's see what they can do here with their first man advantage. Liracos, right circle, over for Dimmitt, now to the point because Defaro unloads and a glove saved by Eisenhower. I think he saw that one at the very last second. He was able to cover it up and get the whistle. Face off coming to the left of Eisenhower. Graham v. Mortley. Mortley wins it right back to Eisenhower, and he'll play it off to Susie. Ooh, that was dangerous on the man. Disadvantage. Nicoletti up ahead for Thomas, and it'll pay off for Battle Creek. Mortley into the zone, right wing circle. He takes a check from DeCristofaro, knocks him to the ground, and Columbus will take it back. They've got numbers, three on two, over to the left wing side for Graham. Graham at the hash mark, stops it up for reinforcements. Dimmitt to Clauston, he fires glove, save Eisenhower from the stand-up position, able to see that one through traffic. 4.06 now left to go here in the second, 51 seconds remaining in the Georgia Power power play, and it's still 2-0 Columbus. No scoring to speak of here in this second period. You have not missed much, well, except for some uh, scary matrix-inducing stuff, if you will. Kostuka from the neutral zone. We'll dump it into the left wing corner for Babin. We ribbed that one around. Ooh, you, too many men on the ice against Columbus. Now Schapitzen, he takes a slash and a penalty coming up against Battle Creek. It'll be a five on three for a short period of time as Mortley gets caught being a little too frisky with the stick. And he will head off to the penalty box. You see Schapitzen just as he got in over the line. Mortley sits for two, 16.30 mark. It'll be 14 seconds of five on three. Georgia Power power play time. That begins with a face-off between Graham and Champlain. Champlain doing a good job forcing his man off the puck. And now some more glitching, and Battle Creek comes out of the zone with it. Carey out of the box. Ooh, looks like he interfered with his own man. Unfortunate there. And they weren't ready for that one. Here's Graham left circle. A shot. Glove save made by Eisenhower. 2.55 left to go here in the second and 1.26 remaining in the Georgia Power Power Play. Columbus in control right now on their second Georgia Power Power Play of the night for another minute and 26. Susie, big check there by Falleth. Completely knocked him down, but Battle Creek's defense able to bail him out and force it down the length of the ice. Here's Krupp right wing circle with some space. Goes for the fancy deke between the legs. Krupp fires a shot, glove save. Rebound popped up on top of the net. Bondarenko to Fallis, and what a kick save made by Eisenhower as he slid over to his left. De Cristofaro and Clauston play a little catch. Right circle, Fallis. Clauston back for De Cristofaro, now Bondarenko. Moving it to the right side, here's Fallis. De Cristofaro again, the umbrella formation working out with a lot of passing. Not a lot of shooting right now for Columbus. Fallis drives the net, right circle, pass across Bondarenko, waits, fires, save made, rebound loose. Fallis couldn't kick it to a stick. Now he turns around and shoots, and Nicoletti got the block. A minute left to go here in the Liberty Utility second period, 2-0 Columbus and the River Dragons. Hemming Battle Creek in in the latter stages of the period. Schapitzen, left circle for Fallis. He takes a check, but has it down in the corner to the middle crew. That one hit him in the heel of the stick, and he couldn't control it. Nicoletti up ahead for Carey. Eight seconds left to go in the second. One more rush for Battle Creek. Carey to Mortley. High slot. A shot padded away by Karpinski. Two seconds left. That will do it for 40 minutes of play. No goal scoring, but it was certainly entertaining. Columbus with a couple of power play opportunities. Could not cash in, though, and so Battle Creek still within striking distance. We'll see some good saves on these highlight reels as it remains 2-0 on the first period goals from Laporte and Lenartsen. Second intermission and media timeouts are brought to you by the Swamp Fox Distilling Company in Buena Vista, Georgia, and we'll be right back. Hey, y'all. Ever wonder what it's like to eat like a real New Yorker? Stop in for carved New York strip steak and butterfly shrimp at Golden Krell. Get all you want of our juicy hand-carved New York strip steak and crispy jumbo butterfly shrimp. So good, you won't be able to forget about it. Carved New York strip and jumbo shrimp. Available at dinner every weekend for a limited time. Only at Golden Krell. The only one for everyone. Carved New York strip and butterfly shrimp. Available Friday and Saturday after 4 p.m. and Sunday after 11 a.m. 
Candlewood Suites Northeast is the official hotel of the Columbus River Dragons. Your stay will be the best it can be with their spacious suites, full kitchens, and numerous upscale amenities that make your extended stay an extended pleasure. Give them a call at 706-940-0900 or book your room online at IHG.com and searching for Candlewood Suites Northeast. Located at 6611 Whittlesley Boulevard in Columbus, Candlewood Suites is only minutes away from all the fun and excitement that area attractions have to offer. We are back here at the Columbus Ice Rink. Hey, that vendor shouldn't be sitting down. He's being lazy right now. Somebody's got to get on that. Scott, you make sure you take note of that. 2 0 Columbus, 20 minutes left to go here in this one. Graham B. Alves on the draw. We are underway. Columbus wins it going right to left in their white jerseys. Battle Creek going left to right in the blacks. Luciani, left point. More tearing, but Young in the middle with it. Karpinski was able to poke it away. The tearing seems to be favoring Battle Creek. Hope we don't miss any good action if that were to happen. Nicoletti left point, a kick save made by Karpinski. Nicoletti playing some catch with Alves along the left wing side. Now Liaracos with a good check and forces himself in the situation. Luciani a shot from in close, and that one kicked. Flippered away by Karpinski. Oh, between kick and flipping, it was going to be kipper. I don't know if that was a good word to use. Nicoletti at the far side boards, tied up with Liarakos. Yanni's going to come out with it. Klaus it back to Liarakos, and a save made by Eisenhower. I think Alves got most of that one on the block and allowed Eisenhower to glove an easy roller. There's the save. Look at that from Karpinski. Very good mechanics, high atop his crease. Just making the calm left pillow save. Dimit v. Pfeiffer on this one. 17.39 left to go here in the third. 2-0 Columbus. Pfeiffer will win the draw and sends this one ahead to Soilus. Soilus left wing side. Runs out of room at the blue line, so he'll dump it in. Kostukov overskated it there. So too did Pfeiffer. Kostukov trying to get it back. Shea Carey knocks it away from him. Carey to Soilus. Left wing circle. And that one hit away by DeCristofaro. Here comes Krupin in the neutral zone. Two on twos. He's got a trailer. That's Fallis. He drops it back for Dimmitt. Good reinforcement there. Back behind the net for Fallis. On the forehand. Skates it out. Fires Eisenhower the save. And he covers up and gives no rebound. 16.03 left to go now in the victory land third period. And Columbus still leading 2-0 by virtue of those two first period goals. Dimmitt kicks it and wins it to Cristofaro for Kostuka. Now him and Fallis play catch. Over to the other point to Cristofaro, right point. Over to Krupp in the circle. Fallis a shot from the slot, save made Eisenhower. And again, we've seen Eisenhower, more conservative net minder on the five on five, not giving up any rebounds and not taking many chances, taking a lot of whistles in his own end. That's Cotton Battle Creek hemmed in once or twice. Sure, they want to work on, but they're running out of time in this one. Ozilin center point for Kugler. A little give and go. Ozilin just shot, and that one blocked in front by Keenan. Hayes to the middle, and Laporte was looking for a second. It was poked off of his stick quickly. Here's Kekos. Over for Keenan, now up into the zone. Mortland. Mortland, right wing circle with him. I'm almost ignoring the tearing now because it just seems like every time Battle Creek has the puck, the Matrix is freaking out as if they don't mean them to have it. Mortley, left wing circle with it. Back for Citrone, left wing circle. He rings this one around. Kugler from behind the net. Kugler getting this one up, left wing circle, and now here's Hayes into the zone. Hayes across, Lenartson, he fires in a pad save made by Eisenhower. Lenartson was also looking for his second. Ozilin and Kugler play a little catch, a shot deflected wide of the glove hand on Eisenhower. 12.35 left to go here in the third. 2-0 Columbus. They're looking to take seven of nine points on the weekend and really apply some big time pressure to Danville. And if this score were to hold and Danville can't pull a result of more than two points, Columbus will take over that third spot in the West. Right wing circle, Dorossi with this one. Over for Keenan, now him and Gregorich play catch. Keenan, left wing circle, 11-11 now to go here in the third. Make a wish, rimmed around. Keenan trying to knock this one out. Gregorich played away at the right point. Gregorich at the circle with it. Now to the left wing circle for Morgan. Now to Keenan. Gregorich with it. Again for Team. His shot goes high over the ball. Champlain to Garossi. Now he plays catch with Gregorich. Checked it on the wall. That one just squirts out past the right point. Under 10 minutes to go here in the third. Turned over left wing side. Here's Gerson in over the line. And Gerson was quickly double teamed in Champlain. Took it off of his step. 
Right the other way comes Battle Creek. De Rossi for Alves. He scores. Who wished for a Battle Creek goal at 11-11? Well, they got it. 9.07 to go here in the third, and it's 2-1 Columbus. See here, De Rossi coming into the zone, and Alves just found some space, high slot, and an open top right corner. Karpinski might have gone down maybe a little early on this one. Tough to tell. It appeared to be good timing and just a better shot by Ryan Alves. He makes this a 2-1 game, and if you were paying attention with us during the Friday broadcast, you know that this is a dangerous situation. If you let Battle Creek hang around, they will bite you. So Columbus, they have to be on their A-plus game to close out this job professionally. Here's Bondarenko, right wing circle. Over to the right point. He to borrow a shot. That one blocked away by Eisenhower. Luciani collects the rebound. 8.15 to go here in the third. Left wing circle. This one stopped up to Christofaro, tying up Young along the far side boards. Bondarenko and Kostukov, they play catch in their own end. Now up ahead, here's Lirakos into the zone. Left wing circle a shot, that one kicked away by Eisenhower. Gregor from behind the net, had that one leak out in front on a hit. Nicoletti gives it up, and now right wing circle, here's Luciani to Alves. Back for Luciani, pad save made Karpinski. He covers up the rebound, and we'll get our media timeout. 6.51 left to go in the victory land third period. The exciting conclusion, Columbus 2, Battle Creek 1, up next. Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Columbus Diagnostic Center, the area's clear choice for diagnostic imaging. CDC Northside features the area's first and only 3T MRI, the most powerful MRI available, and our new 64-slice CT scanner, cutting-edge imaging that's available at both locations. For over 30 years, patient comfort, lower costs, and uncompromising dedication remain our top priority. Clearer results for a more accurate diagnosis. Columbus Diagnostic Center and CDC Northside, technology with a human touch. We're back here at the ice rink. Dimmitt and Pfeiffer coming up to the left of Karpinski. Pfeiffer pushes him away. Carry a shot. Sticked away there by Karpinski. Pfeiffer finds the rebound, though, and that one blocked in front, I think, by Dimmitt. And Pfeiffer paid a hefty price for that one. Soilus a chance. That one was weak, but Karpinski looked behind him. Still had it underneath him. Just wanted to make sure, though. 6.15 left to go in the third, and it remains 2-1. to one. Look at Clauston lining up a big hit there on Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer still got the shot off, but it was blocked in front. Good cluster defending right now for Columbus. They don't need to be strong on their game in this last six minutes as it's a one-goal game. Columbus 2, Battle Creek 1, thanks to Ryan Alves. Ball is left wing circle to the middle. Krupp, now for Schapitzen. He plays catch with Clauston. Krupp a one-timer. And that one, I think, got blocked in front. Not sure if Eisenhower saw it or just hit him. Along the goal line, Fall is trying to slam that one home, and Eisenhower says no. Dimmitt, right wing circle, tied up here with Carey. Along the corner boards, trying to help out his crew. You check that Clauston, De Rossi helping out here. Krupp fires from the high slot, and a save made by Eisenhower with 4.27 left to go here in the third. See this chance, very dangerous. It was leaking along the goal line and Fallis just trying to slam it in and Eisenhower doing a good job hanging onto his post, making sure there was no angle at all for Fallis to put that one in on. Pfeiffer v. Hayes on this one. More tearing, but this time it favors Columbus off the faceoff win. Laporte and Lenartsen play a little catch. Now back in the corner, Nicoletti, he looks gasped. He's trying to headman this puck up into the zone. Nicoletti, pass over for Pfeiffer, right wing. Intercepted by Di Cristofaro, and Kostukov quickly moves it back the other way. Hayes, left wing side, two on one if he hustles. Here's Lenartsen, right circle, pad save, Eisenhower. And he's able to find the rebound before it leaks over to his left. Oh, and we're going to get a scrap. Laporte and Nicoletti are going to go. They're trading some rights. Laporte connects in with one. Nicoletti tries to go in from the jersey. He misses on one. Laporte goes for an undercut and misses. Nicoletti with the reach gets in. They both trade a couple. 3.09 left to go in the third, and we get a scrap out of three and three. You knew this was coming eventually. Laporte posturing here. They both connect on uppercuts. Here's Laporte trying to fire in. He connects on another. Nicoletti goes from the jersey. Laporte, a straight right hand. Nicoletti firing in. These guys going for a while. Linesman letting him go, and Laporte finally getting some sweet chin music on Nicoletti to put him down to the ice. Will Laporte got a goal in this one. Now he's got a fight. 
I don't know. No, he did not assist on the Lenartson goal. I was about to say that might be a virtual Gordy Howe hat trick for Will Laporte, uh, but he did not. Lenartson had just come off the bench to be part of that second line of Columbus. So a goal in a fight. He'll fall an assist short, barring a comeback from Battle Creek because he's in the box for five minutes. 3.09 left to go in the third. Laporte will have basically three minutes of overtime should we get there. And that's all he's left to be eligible for. Here comes Battle Creek back the other way. Left wing circle, checked into the corner. Deep for Stafaro will take it off of Gunn. Here's Alves. He's tied up with Kostukov. Moving this one up into the neutral zone. Left wing side, three on two if he hustles. Kostukov, left circle, firing just. Save made there by Eisenhower's blocker. And a rebound out in front, covered up by the Battle Creek netminder. Kostukov, we know he has a hard shot, but doesn't really like coming down on the play like that. And I think he might have been in unfamiliar territory. Still put on a very good shot. Forced a tight blocker save there on Eisenhower. 149 left to go here in the third. Columbus 2, Battle Creek 1. Hayes wins the draw. Right circle to Cristofaro. Kostukov playing a little catch along the left wing side with Hergot. There we go. Knocked off the puck there by Gregor. 115 left to go in the third. Lenart's in there, steps far side wall. Be Cristofaro, right point, knocked off of him. Down the ice it goes. Keiko's racing after him here with Kostukov with under a minute to go in the victory land third period. 2 1 Columbus. Our eyes are going to be on Eisenhower. Left wing circle. Here's Hergot. He fires a shot and a blocker save made there by the Battle Creek netminder. Graham from in close. And that one turned aside by Eisenhower. 46 left to go in the third. Up the wall, more tearing, but Mortley somehow into the zone. Also off that tearing, Eisenhower's to the bench. Six on five here for Battle Creek. Citrone to the middle, knocked away. Babin and holds in right circle. More stuff in the slot. Somehow Karpinski ends up with it, and the Matrix just can't handle it. Battle Creek just might be able to tie this one up, but the Matrix doing their best to make sure it doesn't happen. See a shot from in tight. That was Graham's. That was the last save Eisenhower made before heading off to the bench. 23.9 left to go in the third. Six on five here for the Rumblebees. Graham wins the draw. Clauston tied up. There's more tearing. It's loose in the slot. Columbus comes out with it. Liraco's looking for the empty netter. Left wing side. He's bearing down and he hits the side of the net. Bonarenko thinking about the wrap road. Liraco's gets blocked in front. Under 10 to go here in the third. Another effort. This time, Bondarenko got blocked. Battle Creek can't get out of their own zone. Three seconds left to go. A shot well wide from an acute angle. And that will do it. Columbus comes away with the three points tonight. Seven out of nine on the weekend. And they, as of right now, it appears, have third place in the Western Division, barring what Carolina and Danville produces. Well, a tough, gritty effort in this one. Battle Creek going to go home with only two points. That's not going to feel good for them, but I tell you, they made some big-time strides as a team in this one. Really gave Columbus two good games. That Saturday game turned into a blowout quickly. But I tell you what, Joel Eisenhower, a phenomenal net miner. We see him making a couple of saves. There, not so much. Len Artson potted it in. Again, that one goes down as the game winner, actually. Columbus 2, Battle Creek 1. That'll do it for this one. Let's do a quick recap here on the Michelob Ultra post-game show. The goals from Lenartson and Laporte for Columbus. For Battle Creek, Ryan Alves. Uh, we don't get our three stars of the game, unfortunately. We just head back uh, to our default screen. So let's take a quick peek and see those stats. We'll freeze frame them for you again. Shots on goal in this one, 40 to 22 in favor of Columbus. That really shows you how dominant they were in this one. But again, Joel Eisenhower, he just had a phenomenal game. Uh, 0 for 2 on the Georgia Power. Power play was Columbus. Did not have a Houston Clinic penalty kill. They did have five minutes of penalties, but that was the Laporte fight. But otherwise, you have to say a very good, good, well-disciplined game for the River Dragons, and it allows them to hold on to this one-goal win. Uh, your three stars of the game, I guess let's just go ahead and choose them for you right here, right now. Star number three, I think you got to give it to Joel Eisenhower. He's had an unbelievable weekend. He had 38 saves in the loss in this one. Uh, you know, the, the losses, they aren't on him. And even the win is entirely on him, the effort he made in this one. A big weekend for Eisenhower, but he's only able to steal two points from down here in Georgia for his team. 
Star number two, I'm going to give it to Anton Lenartz and the eventual game-winning goal, a good heads-up play off the bench. Had a couple of hits in this one, too. But when you're talking about hits and you're talking about rough stuff, that's going to go to star number one. How about Will Laporte picking up a goal in this one and then entertaining the fans with about three minutes left to go. A good scrap, put his man down, and Will Laporte, for me, is going to pick up star number one. So that's your three stars of the game. Keep your eyes out for that Carolina and Danville sim, I believe being called by Carolina play-by-play -play man Drew Blevins. If the Thunderbirds are able to sweep the Dashers all nine points out of nine or even just eight points out of nine, Columbus would still hold on to that third-place spot in the West. It sets up a lot of drama heading into the final weekend of the season, that first weekend in April. Can't wait to see what will come out of that? Well, it's been an absolute treat being alongside you this weekend. I'm Zach DeBozart, the voice of the River Dragons. I'm sure you'll hear me in some way, shape, or form next weekend as Columbus has big games Friday and Saturday against Carolina, and then that aforementioned game which could decide the playoff seating in the West. Columbus hosting Danville on Sunday, April 5th. Until then, though, we have to say goodbye. One more time, your final score, Columbus 2, Battle Creek 1 on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Have a good night, everybody. You've been listening to the Michelob Ultra Post Game Show on the River Dragons broadcast network. Tonight's show was brought to you by B&B Beverage Company, Michelob Ultra, Cypress Partners, Express Printing, Chattabrucci Southern Brew House, and PMB Broadcasting. All rights to this broadcast are reserved by the Columbus River Dragons and PMB Broadcasting. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the description or accounts of this game are expressly prohibited without the written consent of the Columbus River Dragons and PMB Broadcasting. This has been a presentation of the Columbus River Dragons Hockey Club.